everybody, Backyard Bullion here. Welcome to this week's Ponderous Wednesday. Now, if you're new to my channel or don't know, Ponderous Wednesdays are my forum for taking a thought-provoking or interesting topic and having a good old ramble about it here on YouTube to stimulate some interesting discussion down in the comment section. Now, this week's topic is going to be me sharing a little bit about me and my story to you guys. I wanted to share it because I've come to a point in my life where pretty much Backyard bullying is my livelihood, it is my business. Every day, every week it seems, I'm taking more and more time out of my working week from my self-employed day job as a business consultant to put energy, time and effort into Backyard bullying. And I wanted to share with you guys a little bit about why that's important to me, how I even got into this whole game as well, because so much has changed in my own thinking and outlook on life generally. And I think it's a really interesting story. I know a lot of my friends out there who know about what I do now for a living um, have said it's an interesting story. And I wanted to share uh, with you guys what I'm up to and how I even got here. You've probably seen from the video title uh, that it says, quitting my job was the best decision that I ever made. And uh, that's the crux of it. That's the kind of culmination of the story uh, of how I even got into uh, this whole game. I became self-employed. I quit a day job, which was, let me tell you, a very interesting decision and a very difficult decision to come to. And I want to talk a little bit about that. Now, I am not here to advocate that everybody should quit their jobs and follow their potential hobbies into a business. That is not going to happen for everybody. There's uh, obviously so many different circumstances for lots of people out there. And I'm not here to tell people to quit their jobs or to say that you should quit your jobs if you're unhappy, because I know there's very different situations for everybody. And I was an incredibly fortunate position that I was able to take that opportunity to what I say is basically have a little bit of a midlife crisis, to quit that job, to go self-employed, to have that risk, to have that kind of liability of not having a stable income, to try and just to experiment with life and see what I could make of it. So that is kind of, I guess, the disclaimer to put up here. The one I'm sharing today is very much fitting with what I had in my life, what my situation was, my, my financial situation, my personal life situation was, uh, and it's going to be different for everybody. So with that in mind, I would love to know your opinions on my story, and I'd love to hear your stories as well. So please do comment down in the comment section. Now, I've got out here on the table a whole bunch of different pieces of hand or silver, which I've made. This is fast becoming my livelihood and my business. It really is. And I'm not underestimating when I say I'm taking more and more time away from my day job, so to say. Uh, it's hardly a day job anymore because Backyard Bullion seems to be the day job. And if you'd like to support me, if you'd like to support my channel and support my hand poured silver, then I'd encourage you to go over to my website, backyardbullion.com, where you'll find the majority of these pieces. Some of them have already been sold already. Uh, but you can support me by going over there and uh, and purchasing my hand pulled silver. That would be fantastic. So where to begin? This is very much going to be a bit of a storytelling rambling uh, video. So I hope you guys stick with me and bear with me through to the end. It should be, I think it's an interesting story. I've been told it's an interesting story and uh, I wanted to share it with you guys here. Now, the first place to start is I want to say that I have been very lucky in life. You know, I've been incredibly lucky Coming up through my childhood, I had a very loving family, very loving uh, childhood, very nice upbringing. I was very fortunate enough to go to a very good school. My parents were both teachers and I was able to uh, get into a very good school because my dad taught there uh, and we got in when that was not necessarily going to be possible. So that was very, very fortuitous. And uh, as a consequence, I had avenues available in my life that would not necessarily be there for everybody. I was able to go to university. Uh, I got a degree. I even went to uh, uh, sort of further education and got a master's degree. So I was very fortunate on that side of things. But one thing that was always a little bit odd was my career choices. And I remember being back at school, uh, and, you know, a very good school, very uh, posh school, one might say here in the UK. And um, the career counsellors there were not that great, if I'm being honest. They did not um, suggest careers really they basically just said you should do what interests you and what um, you're enthusiastic and passionate about that's what you should do at university not taking up any kind of vocation not going into uh, you know doctoring or law or getting us thinking about different professions that might be available 
post-university, it was very much about just do what you're interested in because you'll get more out of it as an all-rounded education. So I did a humanities subject. I basically did history and um, that was fine. I absolutely loved it. It was a little bit of an easy degree in some senses because half the time I had very few lectures and some of the lectures which I had I didn't even attend because I could do a lot of the learning remotely at, uh, at the library or something. So, you know, reading books essentially. So, um, yeah, there was a lot of slacking at university and consequently I came out of university without any real kind of direction about what I wanted to do with my career. So I basically fell into some you know interesting jobs to say the least. I was working in a uh, in a loans company processing loan applications for individuals who couldn't get loans anywhere else and we all know how that industry turned out. It was not very good. Uh, and that was pretty soul destroying, you know, to processing a loan for a couple who wanted to have a wedding and it was going to cost them £10,000 in a loan. But over the course of five years, they'd be paying back nearly £50,000. You know, that, that was quite bad. There was a lot of restraint involved in not picking up the phone to the customer and just saying, don't do it. This is going to cost you too much money. Um, but, you know, that's that's what I did. And I didn't really like it. So I ended up quitting that job. And I found another job in kind of business consultancy. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail about it because I want to protect my identity, of course. But I went into kind of a business consultancy role and that was fun. I enjoyed it. It was actually really uh, interesting. It was it's certainly different to what I was doing before. And it got me thinking about the future that I wanted to make for myself. So I went back to university and I did a master's degree in business consultancy. So I have that kind of background uh, in business consultancy. And then after that master's degree, I went back into that uh, field and I got myself a better job. The uh, The master's degree very much helped me find a step up the ladder, which I would have taken five, six years to make if I took that one year out to do the master's degree. It catapulted my career forward, which was fantastic. But there was always something missing. There was always something that just didn't quite sit with me. I enjoyed my job whilst I was there, whilst I was busy, but the jobs which I had were not necessarily busy all the time, constantly. And that was the hard part for me to deal with personally and emotionally. So whenever there was a situation where I was less than busy, I would always be constantly bored. I would just, my mind would wander, I would not be focused, I would feel very clock watchy at my desk and just did not enjoy what I was doing at all. And I remember numerous times just thinking to myself, I'm bored. I don't like this. This is just, I hate this. I want to do something else. What else can I do? And you know, a lot of the time in those situations, when you're sitting there, when you're bored, you will just, your mind just wanders and it doesn't work that well. And I became quite a grouchy, not very nice person. Uh, Mrs. Backyard Bullion and I were together at this time. And I remember I'd be coming home from work and I'd be in a mood, I'd be grumpy, I'd had a bad day. And I just let, you know, let that kind of absorb me and just be all zonked out on the sofa. Uh, you know, it just wasn't who I wanted to be in life. And it eventually came to a head. Uh, it got to a point where I was so fed up with not feeling right. And then, of course, it doesn't help when you see a lot of your other you know, friends and family members out there who um, you know, talk about their jobs in a fantastic way. They absolutely love it. Now, of course, everybody presents the best of things. And I always did that as well. I always presented the best side of you know, me and my career and everything that I was doing. Um, and that was fine, you know, I would present that everything was brilliant and I heard everybody else saying that their jobs were brilliant and I suspected that people maybe had similar situations to me feeling not so great about their jobs, but I just thought that was normal. I thought people were meant to moan about their jobs and not have the best of time at their jobs. A job was a job at the end of the day. But it got to a point where it really was, you know, make or break time and I just decided, you know, we, we were very fortunate in our situation and don't get me wrong, that is exactly why I was able to do this. We were fortunate in that we, you know, we didn't have kids, we weren't tied down with, uh, you know, huge mortgage. I could theoretically take some time to work out what it was that I wanted to do. Now, when I was uh, working and when the, you know, the job was busy, that was fantastic and I enjoyed it. It was very fulfilling and I loved being busy and I still do love being busy and that's what is important to me. So I decided to quit my job and that was very difficult to do. I liked the people I worked with, absolutely loved them. They were a wonderful bunch of people and I'm still in touch with a number of them today. 
but uh, the job itself and the fact of working for somebody else and being told what to do and you know not necessarily enjoying it really to the full degree was frustrating so I quit that job and I went into the same field but working for myself with other small businesses rather than working for one business I wanted to work for 20 small businesses or 30 small businesses that was the plan uh, and going self-employed was a very daunting prospect and I quickly realized and I didn't do that much research into going into sort of a self-employed environment I, I did a little bit I talked to a few people in fact I'd I, the, one of the things that spurred me to think about this was in my job I met a lot of different other consultants which would come into businesses and uh, do training do uh, you know think various different bits and bobs for the business basically and I got talking with a lot of those people and they were saying how you know fulfilled they felt they had such a great work-life balance they were able to pick and choose when they worked they were able to take a month off here and there if they wanted to work you know overtime in a month they could do a month on a month off and they'd be absolutely fine with that so you know that really really called to me and I took that decision to quit that day job quit working for somebody else and work for myself now that was difficult, That was very, it takes a lot of energy and effort to um, get up in the morning, to sit at your desk, to make phone calls, to make cold call phone calls to uh, other businesses out there, to meet people, to engage with people, to play that long game because you might well talk to a business but they don't want to get involved for at least another six months or a year or even longer and um, you know that, that's tough, that's difficult. So I did that and I did that for you know about about a year before I found the world of silver and I found the world of silver through being made a godfather and I wanted to get some nice things for my godson and I was getting coins from the Royal Mint that was what I thought about and I found videos on YouTube of people pouring silver and the rest is history I made videos and the channel grew and has continued to grow I made hand poured silver and my skills have continued to grow to the point where I can make pieces like this. And if you look back at some of my earliest pieces, they're not very good at all. Uh, and this has quickly turned into my, my business. And I've always said along the way to friends and family and ex coworkers as well, who look at me with a little bit of, you know, a strange eye, they say, why are you doing this? And I say the crux of this, the whole point of this is it makes me happy. I am a better person because of what I do here in Backyard Bullion Land. I am an enthusiastic person. I am passionate about what I do. I would never have expected myself to be able to build something like this and bring something like this to market, build a brand, build products, be creative, make videos for you guys here on YouTube. I just never thought that that was possible. And here we are. And, uh, you know, there's a few people to thank for that, that Mrs. Backyard Bullion for sticking through me and for helping everything I do here. Um, but, you know, a lot of it is down to that sort of self-motivation, that self-drive. And uh, it's something which is very difficult to instill in somebody. But one, well, there's actually two things which I want to sort of finish on here, which really helped with my work ethos and sort of looking outlook on life. And that's come from two separate people. One is a YouTuber and he uh, has this motto. He says, do something today which makes you stronger tomorrow than you were yesterday. And that really resonates with me. I always look to do something today which will make my life and my day better tomorrow. And that's something which is really important. The other really important phrase which has stuck with me, which was given to me by a one of these business consultants I met all the way back when I got started. And he said, if you change the way you look at things, the things you look at and the way you act will change. And that's very, very true. You know, I looked before as a job, as a, basically a means to an end. I was always at that job. I never really necessarily enjoyed it, but I did it. And it was a means to a paycheck. Now I'm very much, you know, I look at this as me. It's part of me now. It's part of my brand. It's part of what I want to do with my life. It's part of what I want to experience and bring to you guys. And that's me. And that makes me passionate about it. And that's what's really important to me. So there we go. That is my story. That's part of my story about how I got here, how I got onto YouTube land and how Backyard Bullion is fast becoming my full time business. And I can very much foresee, certainly within the next couple of months that this pretty much will be the exclusive business that I run. Uh, I do still do the odd bit of 
business consultancy work and I have got uh, some local clients who keep on using me there uh, you know some of them are aware of what I do here as well because you know they've asked me to do more work have a little bit more capacity and I just can't I have to turn work down now and that's fine I really want to do that and I really want to continue doing that but there will become a time where I have to make a final choice about what I really want to do because I'm busier than ever with Backyard Bullion and busier than ever with the Silver Forum with the group orders with just life in general, YouTube is going fantastically well and I want to continue to grow that and continue to grow it to the point where, you know, it can be the full-time job. That dream of being a YouTuber and a small business owner is something that I've got the bug for now and I really want to continue doing it. So what I'm trying to say is thank you. All of this, you know, I've said along the way here that I've done a lot of hard work and I have and Mrs. Backyard Bullion has as well. But you guys are really the ones I want to thank because without you guys, and I know this is now like 16 minutes into the video and there's not going to be very many of you watching, but the ones of you that are still watching here, you guys are the best of the best because you stick around, you watch to the end of videos, you care about me, you care about the brand and that's amazing and that's just so humbling and I want to say a huge and massive thank you to all of you. Look, anyway, I'm getting a bit too rambly, a little bit too uh, soppy now. All I want to say is I'm here to stay and it will be here for a long time, so thank you. If you liked this video, if you liked my story and you want to support me and my brand and everything that I'm doing here on YouTube, then as I said at the start of the video, please head on over to my website and consider purchasing my hand pulled silver. That would be very helpful. Otherwise, just put a thumbs up on this video. That helps enormously as well with the YouTube algorithm. Also, hit the subscribe button if you've not subscribed already and you want to hear future videos, future stories, and future ponderous topics coming out every Wednesday. Thank you everybody for watching and please make sure you like, share, comment, and subscribe for more.